Hello, I am Dr. Nicholas Morrissey, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy has been proposed as an adjunct to wound care and revascularization for the healing of chronic wounds. The physiology of hyperbaric oxygen involves driving up the arterial oxygen tension to supraphysiologic levels in order to provide more oxygen to the wound bed. Due to potential toxicity, exposure must be limited to less than two hours per session, raising the concern of whether there is enough of a prolonged effect. Basic research studies have demonstrated prolonged elevated wound oxygen levels after therapeutic hyperbaric oxygen treatments, and animal studies suggest hyperbaric oxygen may increase angiogenesis in wounds. In addition, studies in humans show elevated wound oxygen levels, vasoconstriction, potentiation of antibiotic effect, and reduction in leukocyte chemotaxis. There have been numerous clinical studies evaluating hyperbaric oxygen therapy as a modality to assist in healing wounds. The major criticism of the extant literature is the poor quality of the studies. A Cochrane review published in 2004 identified only five studies that were useful for review yielding data on 163 patients. The randomization and treatment methods in most of these studies were not fully reported. Based on very small numbers, the reviewers suggested that for chronic diabetic wounds, hyperbaric oxygen might provide improved healing of chronic wounds at one year. There was no evidence suggesting improved outcomes in ischemic, venous, or traumatic wounds. A review in the American Journal of Surgery critically reviewed the literature regarding several types of non-healing wounds. They similarly concluded that hyperbaric oxygen therapy had potential benefit for preventing amputation in diabetic patients. However, they criticized the size and quality of the study. For other wounds, hyperbaric oxygen therapy has resulted in mixed results with the quality of studies again being questioned. Venous wounds were shown in small series to respond initially to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. However, long-term results were no different from standard wound care. In no cases has hyperbaric oxygen therapy been recommended as standalone therapy for the treatment of chronic wounds of any etiology. Ischemic wounds will not be expected to respond to hyperbaric oxygen therapy, as the physiologic effect will require blood flow to the wound in order to expose the tissue to the superphysiologic levels of oxygen. Vascular surgeons are often faced with requests to consider hyperbaric oxygen therapy as a final option for wound healing in patients who clearly suffer from, from ischemia. Based on the physiology of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, ischemic wounds are not likely to benefit, and indeed no studies support the use of this modality in ischemic wounds. The temptation to refer patients for hyperbaric oxygen therapy as a final option must be measured against the potential for toxicity and the risk to the patient of having prolonged exposure to the negative effects of a large necrotic wound. When one reviews the literature to evaluate the efficacy of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, there are a number of issues that are obvious. First, hyperbaric oxygen therapy has been advocated as a wound therapy adjunct for over 40 years. In that time period, there are few studies whose quality is adequate enough to support clinical decision making. Of the studies published in the literature, the principal flaws include small numbers, poor study design, inadequate follow-up, and lack of uniform criteria for inclusion and randomization. Physiologic studies suggest there may be a role for hyperbaric oxygen therapy as an adjunct for a highly selected group of wounds. However, the clinical data have yet to clearly define this group. In order for clinicians who care for wounds of all kinds to recommend hyperbaric oxygen therapy, a well-designed large study proving its efficacy is mandatory. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.